Hello and welcome to this video on distance time graphs. These graphs are used to show graphically how far something has travelled in a certain amount of time. So any kind of moving object you can draw distance time graphs for. They might ask you in the exam to draw it for a person running or a car moving or a boat moving or whatever it is. And it just helps by drawing a graph to show what's happening in terms of the speed of the object, how far it's travelling over time, compared to if you look at the data in a table like this. In the exam they might ask you to take some data like this and draw your own distance time graph and when you do all the rules about not joining dots go out of the window and because we're plotting numbers over time we join all the dots up so we've got one continuous line for our distance time graphs. So whenever you get a graph like this you just have to read the axes very carefully because in your physics test you could be looking at either a distance time graph or a velocity time graph. So time is always at the bottom and we need to check that we've got distance along the side. So distance in meters hopefully along the side. Um, sometimes they'll trick you out and put it in things like kilometers or something else um, but you need to look and make sure distance is along the size and if it is you know that you're dealing with something called a distance time graph. You need to be able to have a look at the shape of this distance time graph and work out what's going on in terms of speed. For example, a really steep slope on the graph would show that something is moving really quickly. It's covering loads of distance on the y-axis over a short amount of time. Compare that with a shallower line which would show something going a little bit slower where you're taking a long time to go only a short distance. So the steepness of the line tells you how fast it's going. So the steepness of the line tells you how fast something is going. You'll also see this, the idea of steepness in another word we call the angle of the line, the gradient. So the steepness or the gradient of the line in the distance time graph tells you how fast something's travelling. So if we take this example here, you should be able to see at what place the object is travelling the fastest. Now if we put some letters on here to break it down, we'll put A, B, C and D, have a think about between which points the object is travelling fastest in this distance time graph. You should see here that the gradient is the steepest between A and B because it's steeper here than it is over here. So this is where it's travelling the fastest because if you w we have a look at the numbers it's travelled 20 metres in 40 seconds. And if we compare this to this part here, the C and D, where it's travelled just 10 metres in 80 seconds approximately. Okay, So massive differences in how far it's travelled over time. So if it's steeper, it's faster. And if it's got a shallower gradient, it's slower over here. Now let's concentrate in the section between B and C, because this is really important as well. If we look here... At this point here, we need to read off of the graph, the distance travelled is still 20. So it started off at zero, between A and B it's travelled 20 metres in 20 seconds, but then it doesn't change after that between B and C. At C, he's still only 20 metres away from where he started off at. So any flat points on these distance time graphs show that the object is stationary. It's not moving. So between B and C it's stationary and then it moves away again. 
So in the exam, for example, they might talk about a bus or something like that, and they might say, at which point is the bus stopped and picking up passengers? You need to look for flat points on the graph, which will show this idea. So for foundation, you need to be able to draw them using information in a table and then pick out at which point the object is travelling fastest and slowest and which point they are stationary and not moving. The next bit of content is for higher tier only. Okay, so for higher tier we said before, all of this is for higher, we said before the gradient tells you the speed that the object is travelling at and basically for higher you need to be able to calculate that gradient. If you remember at this point here the object is stationary so you know by definition that its speed would be 0 meters per second because it's not moving. But let's have a look at concentrating on calculating the speed between A and B here and C and D here. And all we need to do is calculate the gradient of the line. So to do that, we have to draw on some triangles to help us. So this one, I'm going to complete the triangle by taking it down to 40. And over here, I need to make a triangle to help me here. So draw these on on the exam. Don't try and guess the numbers, um, if you draw it on it makes things a little bit easier. So in maths you may well have drawn these triangles on before and it's exactly the same in science. But why are we drawing these on? Well we need to remember this equation, speed equals distance divided by time. And if we put some units on there, we've got distance in meters time in seconds. So because we're dividing meters by seconds, that must mean the units for speed are meters divided by seconds or meters per second. So this equation, I'd recommend you putting it on a post-it note on your wall because they don't give you this one in the exam. They expect you to know this equation speed equals distance over time. If you forget it, Remember that you, the units for speed are meters per second and that will help you remember that you have to do a distance divided by a time. So if you do forget, remember meters per second and then you'll know that you have to do distance divided by time. So how do we use these triangles here to calculate the gradient and therefore calculate the speed? Well, if speed equals distance over time, we take the distance part first on the y-axis. So this bit, which I'll just call y to show the numbers on the y-axis, divided by this bit here. And similarly over here, we need, we need to take this difference in y and divide it by this value here of x. So remembering that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So let's have a look at this gradient of this line first between A and B. So what is the speed between A and B? So we do distance divided by time. So speed equals distance divided by time. The distance here between 0 and 20 is 20 meters, so 20 meters divided by the time which we look at here which is 0 to 40 which is 40 seconds. So our speed 20 divided by 40 which is 0 0.5 meters per second. Don't forget your units. There are often two marks of questions, one for the answer and one for the units. If we have a look at the second example here then, what is the speed between C and D? So again speed equals distance over time. So speed equals the distance travelled in this part 
which is between C and D. Well, C was 20 and D was 30. So this difference here is 10 metres divided by, at C they were at 100 seconds and at D they were at 180 seconds. So we're talking a difference here of 80. Okay, so 80 seconds. So we, how we got those numbers, if I extend that line back to the axes, you can see that we're looking at the difference here between 20 and 30. So this value here was 10. This value here between C and D was 80. So we do 10 meters divided by 80 seconds, which will give us a speed of 0.125 meters per second and we said before that we know the steepness of the line will tell us which is traveling faster and these numbers should back that up so this is the steepest line and we're traveling at 0.5 meters per second this is slightly shallower and our speed is 0.125 meters per second so a little bit of higher content there for you. Um, when you do have a look at these calculations, make sure that you check first that we're talking about distance and not velocity time graphs, which we'll look at in another video. If you found this video useful, then please press the like button and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.